Hey guys, Christian over at NFIT Car Stereo. Today we're in a 2002 uh, BMW 3 Series and we're going to show you how to replace this factory business CD radio with an aftermarket Sony CarPlay radio. Alright guys, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to take out this uh, radio. I'll take out the radio. First thing you're going to do is remove this panel over here. Alright, so to remove this panel, you're going to use a panel tool. Um, in this case, we're going to use a uh, PPT-5. All right. So what we're going to do is going to put it down here and just pry a little bit. Right. If you pry straight out, no wiggling, which usually comes up pretty easy. When you do this at home, um, open the door there for more without doing this for the video. Thank you. All right. So if you see over here, what happens is that inside there are little metal things that grab onto these pressure face, you see little scratches right there. That's normal, that's the way it's supposed to work. Now on this side over here, we're gonna do the same thing. All right. Just be very careful, you grab it when you pull it. Oh, I forgot to switch the camera. It's always better to have a cameraman sometimes. Put it back in. All right, so over here we do the same thing. We're gonna just put the panel tool in there, and then we're gonna pry. Just make sure you grab it. All right. Next thing you do is make sure you have no CDs, no CDs, and there's gonna be two Phillips head screws over here. Gonna remove. comes right out. All right. Now, once you get it out, actually, let me get something to protect the shift knob. I'll be right back. All right, guys, now I'm back. So I'm going to pull this out right here. All right. Boom. Now, when you get the radio out, just leave it right there hanging for a second. I get the same panel tool you use to remove the uh, other ones, the PPT-5. Okay. I'll go over here. And actually, you can leave it in the cavity. It probably makes it easier. And just stick it in there and pull up. Sometimes it's that's the one came out really easy, it's not always that easy. Now for the antenna. Oh, that's interesting. Never seen that before. Alright, so if you look at the markings over here, this is when you see blue marker light, that's usually a junkyard radio, which means this went bad and someone replaced it. So for whatever reason that's missing. So the antenna adapter you're supposed to squeeze in and pull up. Uh, you know what? Let me insert a uh, quick uh, edit from a different video. Uh, all right, so you squeeze here, and that releases that. All right, guys, so now we're back. So the um, so the antenna uh, is the AM FM antenna, and this is the main power plug. The way this power plug works is that as you see the sides, as you pull it up, it pushes away. So as you pull this up, it pushes the connector away. Okay. So next thing we're gonna do is remove the climate control. To remove the climate control, oh, before I get too far, this is NFIG PPT one two three four five. Uh, has a bone tool, a scraper. This is a wedge tool, I'll show you this in a second, and two uh, pry tools. All right, so we're gonna use, um, I forgot what I just called this. So you're gonna stick this in here between the uh, climate control, and as you pull up, it'll pop right out. The same thing on the other side. Ah, you see, that's why you use this tool. Oops, sometimes these things get a little hard to get out. This tool helps. All right, so now that we have this over here, uh, this tool, the rule is never pull from the wire, but this is almost impossible to get out without pulling unless you put a little pair of pliers in there. This one goes in here and then over and comes right out. This one has locking tabs. Locking tabs faces the back of the, of the climate control on both sides. Okay, and there you go. That's that. All right, guys, so now we're gonna uh, take apart the air vents. Probably the trickiest part of this entire install. Alright, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna. Oh, I haven't been telling you guys, but make sure you keep track of what screw goes where because it's easy to get them mixed up. Alright, so the way this works is that down here there are two little things that hold in. They're made out of plastic, okay? They're really annoying. 
And the first time I tried to take one of these out, I had a hard time. So you're gonna grab down here, not by the vent. Okay, and you're gonna kind of push up a little. All right, on both sides. There you go, just grab that one. I think I just got it. All right, so once you get the one up, you stick a pry tool in there, the back of it, okay? So what that does is that wedges it up. And then the other side, All right, that one came out. Now that one came out. All right, so what it is, if you look at these little plastic things, you have to lift them over this wedge. All right, it's a lot easier in the summer, okay? So, at this point, what you do is you grab a, whatever, you, I usually grab a pick, but I forget, I always forget about this part, and I don't wanna stop the video. All right, guys, so, yeah, you need a pick. Let's try and do it without a pick to save time, but it's just ridiculous. So you just go for a pick and just pull it right out. Wide side faces the front, the, the faces towards you. Oh, here's where you put the pick. And it went flying. Came back, almost like a boomerang. All right, that's a little clip we just took out. That back there. Now we're just gonna, this one. You just pull it out. Oh, that's what you're doing. Okay. So you just apply a little, gets it out, and you pull back. All right. So now this one, since it's a, a newer year, it has a, uh, oops. All right, so, all right. What you do over there is, make sure I got it on frame. So what you do is you go this way, and you slide it out. On some of the earlier ones, like I just did a 2001 the other day, there's a little tab you have to push in. All right, so next part of uh, this install is removing the shift up. Really, it's just pure force. You just gotta hold it and pull. Ugh. Takes a pretty, pretty decent amount of force. Now put this off to the side so you don't scratch it up. All right, now that we got the shift knob out, you're just gonna grab a panel tool, the PPT2, which is a scraper tool. Just gonna put it in here, give it a little pop, and just lift up nice and gentle. All right. go now down here there's two I want to put this down so you don't scratch up as you're trying to pry it all right so over here we have two connectors a white one and a red one just wiggle it out the little connector comes right out and the white one same thing wiggle it out all right so we lift this over the shift knob. All right. And then over here we have one more connector. Um, this one, just grab them both. Oh, damn. It's a hard connector to remove. It's a cold day today, so a lot, that's why a lot of these connectors are uh, giving me a hard time. Oh, looks like that connector slid out from down there. So if you have that going on, make sure you slide it back in. There you go. There you go. There you go. All right. So now there are two more screws down here that we have to remove. Okay. Put these in the back seat since they're close back here. And then we're gonna lift this up. So usually there's like a little, um, there's goop and stuff here, so it usually gets stuck from years. All right, and also when you lift up, this actually goes under, so you have to lift up and then pull forward, okay? Now, over here, let me put this down. And though we're not using that, we don't want to scratch it up. All right, so down here we have two side connectors, and this comes right out. And then over here, we have one connector, and that comes right out, okay? 
All right, guys, now that we have uh, all this out, now it's time to pop this whole piece out. So what we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna pop this out, pop it high. All right. And that comes right out. Oops. All right, put that in the back seat. Out of the way. There's two screws here that we have to take out. So Make sure you don't drop them. My uh, screw gun has a magnetic tip, so. But even then, I shouldn't be doing this. I'm only doing that because of the videos in the way. Now I'm gonna put these screws in the back because I know they're the same as the rest of them we took out. Now there's two screws in here that we gotta take out that I'm gonna show you. Um, I, sh I shot this in a different video that I didn't like. To, it, I spoke too much and it ended up long so I didn't use it, but I'm gonna use this one part. All right, guys, so for the next part of the install, you're going to have to remove two screws that are down here. I'm using my iPhone to, to film it, so I'm not sure how I'm going to... I'm, I'm going to do some sort of... Yeah, maybe split screen, maybe not. All right, so we're going to... Two screws down here. All right, take one out. And then now we're going to take two out. Okay. See, told you that was good. So, uh, same screws we just took out of the same length, so I'm gonna throw them in the back with the rest of them. So now, you're gonna put the shift knob in. There you go. Put the key on. Pull this back. Emergency brake up, foot on the brake, do not take it off, okay? Now, get this shift knob out of here so you don't scratch it up. And now, this is just gonna, it's always stuck. If it's not stuck, that means no one ever ate or drank in your car, which means you probably got a good car. I mean, they're all good, but... All right, as you pull this up, um, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to unplug. That's the light. This brown one is the ground. Be careful you don't... So when you have this in here, make sure it's not hitting the edge of this. There's a little lip in the back you can rest it on so it doesn't hit. So... I'm gonna unplug that. We're gonna unplug the power, which is the red. Now, over here in the back, there's one big connector. All you gotta do is squeeze like that, and it comes right out. And then next to it is another one that kind of just wiggles out. Okay? Now, keep this high. Alright, because right, you see this? If you drop this down here, you're scratched down here. Now, um, for this installation, we're actually not transferring over the cigarette lighter because we're doing something special. And uh, to take off this piece over here, all you have to do is take off these two T10 torques and the whole piece slides out. Let me go take this off and I'll show you the piece sliding out. All right, guys, this is just a little reminder to put it back in park and uh, take out the key. All right, guys. Is this a single switch or is this a five switch button? It has four switches, what do you mean exactly? All right guys, so I get a lot of questions on uh, what do you mean by the single switch or the five different switches? Um, it's very confusing because you guys see here and you see four switches. This is actually one big switch. See, it's one big switch. So, this is a single switch. Now, when you install an aftermarket radio using an Infig kit or probably every other kit on the market too, you need to know which one. So this is an NFIG single switch, okay? And this is an NFIG five switch. See how it says five separate switches? Just be careful because there's a couple of cars where it's one switch over here, and then um, it's these are all covered by one piece, okay? So this is why we ask you whether you have five or one, because we need to know to know which dash get to send you. Uh, I think the only cars that use this were like 99 and 2000. Um, every 2002 and up uses a single switch, so that helps. All right, guys, here it is. Finally, the parking brake video. Well, lighting's a little off, but it's gonna be quick. So the way this works is that when you pull up the parking brake, you see this wire? It it's, it's linked into this. Boom, touches this metal and grounds itself out. Parking brake wire runs all the way up front. Um, usually, we just take apart the center console and tap in right here, but I found it up front for you. If you guys why not take apart the center console because you're afraid of uh, the wiring up front you can just this is the wire um, it's always a blue with like a brown stripe and yellow tabs all right guys now this video is not uh, this wire is not super easy to get to um, get this out of the way 
get this, lift this little triangle of carpet up. All right, be careful not to bend that wire too much. Then these two will be taped to this harness. Okay, now this harness, there's not a lot of pull here, okay? But in this harness, you will find, of course, monitors in my way. Get the monitor out of my way. There it is. All right, so now what you're going to find is down here, you'll see there's a blue. All right, now I do not, I'm going to be tempted to pull out that with a pick. I don't recommend that only because a pick can cut wires. Use one of the panel tools. Right. Get some of that tape out of there. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab that wire right there. All right, there it is. And what this does, check out the website for how this works better. Oh, let me make sure my microphone's on. Yep. And my lighting is horrible, but we need it to get down into darkness. So <clears throat> we're just going to insert the posi tap, the, the gray part behind it. Okay. Now you have to put your finger behind the posi tap. Actually, you know what? Put the pry tool behind the posi tap. Let's see if that works. Yeah, there it goes. All right. So with the pry tool behind the posi tap. Now what you do, you screw in the needle portion of it. So this is the needle. All right. That screws into there and pierces the wire. Now, I'm not stretching this a lot. I don't want you guys to come over here and try to overdo it and break the wire, okay? All right, so two things you're gonna do. Now you're gonna make sure that's the correct wire. You put your meter, I'm gonna show you two ways of doing that, okay? You're gonna put your meter on continuity. Continuity, I always have a hard time saying that. Which means that when you touch your tips, it will beep. All right, so you can do that. Now put this into the ground, the cigarette lighter. Put this in the middle. All right. Now every time you pull up the e-brake, see how it beeps? You break up, you break down. Second way of doing it is you can put this into a cigarette lighter. This cigarette lighter, I believe, is constant all the time. Oh, don't want to do that. That'll blow up your meter. Um, all right, so then now you're going to put into voltage, change it. All right, and now when you see when you pull up, oops, sorry, red one goes into here, and the black one goes into the parking brake wire. Now, every time you pull up the parking brake, now we're reading voltage, you get 12 volts. See it? Parking brake up, parking brake down. All right, so that means we've successfully tapped into that. Uh, let me put back the center console and uh, actually... No, because I still got to tap into that positive tap wire. I'll be right back. All right, guys. So if you buy the radio from us, um, we'll take out uh, the wiring harness that's built, that comes with the radio, and we'll make you uh, this parking brake wire. Um, all right. So what we'll do right now is you unscrew the other end. You just jam it in there. All right. And then once it's jammed in there, you screw everything back in. Okay. Now, what I would do, to be honest, is I would flatten it down and then I would tape it right here. I'm going to tape it right here to this harness so that way you don't get a, um, it doesn't pull out. Okay. So now that we did that, put this back down to protect everything. All right. And then this little one over here, this little guy. I don't even know if that was pulled up or that was like, um, I guess I pulled it up too. All right. I must've pulled that up too. All right, but now we're good. Now, don't be a silly boy. Uh, perform the test we just did on the end of this cable to make sure those connections are right, okay? All right, guys. So now that we did all that, um, I don't, I'm not sure why I waited. Usually I take this bracket out at the beginning, but whatever. So uh, take the two screws off for that. All right. Now, this bracket um, you can put off to the side. Uh, it's not going to be reused in the new install. Okay. So uh, they're available for sale on eBay. I guess somebody must want it. All right, so there we go. That's that. All right, guys. Now we're back. Just had a little caffeine. Let's see how soon it kicks in. All right, so you're going to go over here. You're going to find the four connectors 
that are for the climate control and you're gonna bring them down below to get them out of your way. All right, tape this up over here like I said, bring this up, don't forget to test this wire. I don't want you guys putting everything back together and then realizing that it didn't make a good connection. All right, so everything's here, everything's good. All right, so main wire harness uh, and the AM FM antenna adapter. So the first part we're gonna put in here is the Enfig SRWH BM1. Uh, if you see it says dash two on the bag, it's because when it says dash two, it means you have the newer version that also can program voice that. So this goes in here, all right. And it's gonna be with the, this way. All right, so what you do is you put them in here on both sides, make sure they go in. And when you squeeze, see how it goes back? It makes a connection by itself, okay? So this is very important. <laughs> I still get a call about this. Must be connected. Um, wire turn on, amplifier turn on wire. So on our last video that we did, um, we thought this was an antenna turn on. So when you put it in, so it was already pre-wired so you didn't have to connect this wire. Later on we found out this is actually an amplifier turn on wire, uh, which isn't a big, on a Sony it doesn't matter, but on an Alpine it does matter because what that means is that um, the radio only works when AM FM is on, not anything else. So this is now a separate wire. Now, this is the box that does your steering controls, okay? Um, it has power ground, uh, switch 12 volts, and the white wire is data. So, in order to do the steering wheel controls, we have a steering wheel control programmer. Why is it a separate piece, you may ask? Because this is specific for Sony. So when you plug this in here, all right, you have to program it. So what you do is you unplug here, wait a minute, and once you plug it back in, the yellow and black will activate the box for a second. And what it does is that you see the black loops that are over here. These black loops say, hey, guys, we're doing Sony. So that's it, program. Now, in this radio, this uses a new Sony protocol. So it still has to be manually programmed on the radio, but we'll get to that later. Um, but at least this programs with the old Sony protocol, so you have no problems. So now, depending on what radio you're installing, you may or may not need a converter. Um, so this is an ISO connector. This is a pretty much German um, standard so it goes into a lot of radios a lot of the Chinese radios are using this standard as well so if you don't have if you have a uh, radio that takes an, an ISO input just plug it right in all right uh, check the uh, website on the drop down where you insert your radio um, it will actually give you uh, the list of your radio and whether or not it'll tell you if you need a plug and play or not. so since we're installing a Sony currently no Sony's use this standard I don't know if they ever did we're gonna need a converter so what this wire does is it converts it from the ISO um, into the, the, this is a copy of the one that came with your Sony, okay? So we're gonna plug this bad boy in here for the speakers. All right, and then this is the power. So what this does is that this converts the ISO into a Sony specific, all right? So what we're gonna do over here is this wire over here, which is the blue. This should be a blue and white, but we've made so many of these that we have to run out of them before we uh, make it over. So, you know, I can just throw away harness because it's missing a strike. So, you connect these two. Now, what this does, this turns on. When it turns on the radio, it gets a signal from the radio, and it goes through the car to turn on the factory amplifier. Over here, we have the parking brake wire, okay? So, what this does, this plugs, well, this is a tricky connector. You always got to pull it back a little bit and then plug it in. All right. So, what that does is that this will tell... Uh, the radio when the parking brake is up to allow you to do certain things you're not allowed to do while you're driving. Okay. Now over here we got the reverse wire. This reverse wire gets connected uh, only if you're doing a backup camera. If you're not doing a backup camera, you just don't have to connect it. Um, all right. There goes that. Now if you want to make this a little neater, what you can do is you can wrap it in tape. All right. Someone pointed out to me recently that on my videos. I haven't been worried about, I haven't been showing how to make the wires neat again. It's it's one of those things where sometimes if you do this, you'll make a big bundle. And when you make a big bundle, it, it uh, sometimes make it makes it actually harder. So since we're not using this wire, we're just gonna tape this off over here. Uh, harder to install the radio, is what I'm saying. Apparently caffeine hasn't kicked in yet. All right, and then for over here, we're just gonna tie these two together. Like so. All right. 
So now we have a nice, neat bundle that makes everybody sleep well at night, okay? Careful with this one. This one's a little tight, but it's fine. All right, so um, now that we have that done, uh, let me get the radio. Let me have sitting in the back. All right, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put a dash, uh, toolbox liner on the dashboard. So with the same protector we are using before, I mean, using the same thing. Uh, the reason we're doing that is because it's easier to show you when the radio's sitting up here. All right, guys, so I'm back. Um, I'm not sure where I ended up. What, what happened was I started plugging into the radio, and then when I went to look back, the radio wasn't even in the frame. We're over here. So uh, just plugged into the car already. So we already explained all this, tidied up the wires a little. So when we go back into the radio now, this is replaces the harness that came with your uh, radio. Don't forget, if you want us to make, uh, if you buy the radio from us, we can make you the parking brake harness. Uh, this is the Enfig AA-BM1, okay? Um, so this is a little different than the one you see on the website. Uh, we're currently, we're waiting an order of a new design from our manufacturer. So uh, this is from a different supplier. All right, so that goes in there. But, you know, our, it does the same thing. Uh, this transfers the connection from a uh, BMW style into the standard Motorola style, okay? Now, uh, as far as the steering controls, we went through this already, I think, but you're going to unplug this, then plug this back in. Now, what this does is that this, the, the box now reads these loops that we have up here, and it tells it, hey, we're doing Sony. But since it's a second generation Sony, um, it allows you to reprogram, so you have to be manually programmed anyway. So here, where it says remote, make sure it's all the way in, because you see, if it's not all the way in, if it's in like that, you're going to run into issues. Oh, I feel that caffeine kicking in. Now, here's the microphone wire. Um, microphone wire, check the website. Um, it's a hard video to film, so we haven't done it. Usually what ends up happening is that when we film a video, by the time we get to the microphone, we're a little tired. I'm a little tired, so it doesn't work out. All right, over here, we have this. All right, that's gonna go full circle. So the, what this does is that you tape this off over here, so if these wires ever get tugged on, they don't fall out, okay? Now, the second USB, or which actually the first USB that is labeled USB 1, that's the one for uh, uh, for video and music. I'm pretty sure both Android and uh, iPhone go into there. Uh, this goes down here because we're going to put that down in a second. All right. So, leave that down there. All right, now, when you go to push this all back in, what you're going to do, is push everything down. Because you see how this has a big opening on the bottom? Once we get uh, everything pushed down, you can push it back up and tuck it into there. Okay? But it makes the install a little easier if everything's down. All right, there you go. This has to go in here. That. All right, we're down. See, see something's pushing it up. What is it? Is it this harness? See, it's this harness. Right. This harness a little further down. See, so so now it's getting pushed out on, but it's not getting pushed down. Which is good. Oh, you know what? So what's going on here? Oh, this is these two big harnesses over here. I'm gonna get in front of them. See, so, yeah, yeah. so now this gets in front of it instead of trying to go behind. There you go. See, that's sat down right there. That's perfect. All right, so nope, that's not perfect because now this thing is bouncing up. All right, so I lied. Leave that big one back there. This thing's just in the way. There you go. Okay, I lied. All right, so that's what we're doing. So this big one stays back here, it gets pushed back, and it frees up a lot of the room. There's a lot of stuff on there, I didn't realize it. All right, so, so we're good. All right, so, what's that saying go? We're getting close to the finish line. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna reconnect this wire. Remember on this one, you have to go forward and then backwards for the latching mechanism. On 
on some of the older ones, there's a little pin you got to push in. All right. I'm going to put this back on over here. We're still in a shot. Yep. Wide side always goes towards the front. I'm trying to make sure I don't scratch that radio. That's all the way in. Push this into here. All right. Make sure everything's good because it's a pain in the butt to take that piece out. So you don't want to to take the vents out. It's not super super easy. All right. Um, all right. So now we are going to use. Oh no, screw down. Oop, time to get the magnet, I dropped the screw. All right guys, so I just said that the hardest part of this install was taking out the vents, I lied. The hardest part of this install is getting a uh, drop screw from between the <laughs> seats in the center console. Wow. <laughs> All right, so. I'm tightening this with a very light screw gun. Uh, don't go crazy with a, with, a, with a big screw gun and strip everything out. All right. Um, just telling you that because I get a lot of people throughout the years with different cars, different kids complaining. Um, you know. The most famous one is an Audi kit where there's a shallow, there's like a hole behind where you have to screw in. So what happens all the time is people screw in might as well kick this back right here. Yeah, there you, go. you don't want to see the leather flexing. As soon as it touches, it's fine. All right, yeah, so what happens is that people, um, they screw with a screw gun, and since it's hollow behind it, they go right through it. <laughs> and what, it, what they're screwing into is actually a solid piece, so it holds very well. And they always call and complain and say that my piece, my my kid's a piece of crap. I'm like, no, kid. It's actually the fact that you used a powerful tool on it. All right, so now it comes to the piece, uh, the cover piece. Um, this cover piece goes right here and covers the radio. Now, if you notice, if it's a little wobbly, um, that's normal. Well, I'm not going to say normal, but the kits all do it. Or you can just put a little bit of tape around it, and it keeps it from wobbling. You can just electrical tape. This is uh, cloth tape, but you'll see it does the same thing. Um, I've tried a couple different clips. They all hold the same. The problem with the kit is that, you know, it's like anything else. People are trying to make it as cost-effective as possible, because if you make a $200 kit, no one's going to buy it. Ooh. You see, now that doesn't move at all. You can put more tape if you want, but when you tighten it up, you see how it just doesn't barely move. Right. So that's good. Now, these screws go right into the plastic, so even with my little screw gun, it's gonna cause an issue. Well, what I mean is it's easy to go over to it. That's a little. Yeah, as soon as it's snug, stop it. Do not try to and be careful like you don't want to catch the side of the kit with a screw gun all right so now at this point you should really turn everything on and test it um I think we're doing a backup camera in this car when I'm done with the video so I'm just putting this back now so it looks pretty it's not pushing on the other side don't tell nobody all right guys now we're back in this area um put time to put all this back together so, like I said before, if you have stuff like this that's hanging out, just push it all the way up, okay? There's plenty of room under this radio for it to go. Um, 
The second USB I tied back a little bit and I left a little bit hanging, so I'm gonna push that up and out of the way as well. Put this down here. All right, so for the relocation, um, what we're gonna do is gonna put the shift knob back in real quick. Shift knob is a little tricky to get in, it's very weird. All right, then we're gonna get the key. Put the emergency brake all the way up. And we're gonna pull it backwards. All right, turn that off. Pull this out again so it doesn't get scratched up. BMW surfaces are pretty, can take a beating, but at the same time, you don't want to risk it. All right, so um, for this, I would tape off. So since we're doing a custom USB, the power plug is no longer going to be used. Whoa. Tape that off, just as a precaution. All right, there we go. Oh, that's not a good tape job, hold on. Cloth tape is a little harder to cut, so. Uh, that's the problem. It's just a pretty big hole. You don't want that getting caught on anything. The ground is ground. Ground's the same as the metal here, so that doesn't really matter. And this isn't gonna touch anything. This is the illumination. Um, so, what are we doing now? So now we're gonna come back over here, all right. Now, remember, this is the aftermarket piece we just got. Um, the connector goes in here. We got the two T10 screws, original that held the original one in the original thing. And the original, uh, I don't know what to call this. This is the relocation panel. I don't know what the other one would be called. Um, so we're going to do like we did backwards. This, let's see if I can show this. This goes in here. Okay. And then we have the little one that's right next to it. Good thing about these cars is that they they the harness is all everything comes together meaning that they, they were tied together because they went to the same location all right this stuff you might wanna to be safe see if we can tuck it under here can't we yeah tuck it under something so it stays out of the way you know that's fine that's good enough now we're gonna go over here we're gonna put the USB through this hole still got the custom surprise all right, that's coming. And then this is going to go. Oops, almost forgot something. There's this piece that slides into here. All right, and just make sure you push it in. Make sure that this locks in right there. Very important. All right. So, make sure that those two are there. Yep. So the first two I'm going to put in are the ones down here. Um, now, adjust your clutch. If you, ugh, keep dropping screws. It's been a long day for me today. Uh, all right. So, all right. So, just so it's snug. All right. This one here, so it's snug. All right, now. This one, yeah, I can see it. All right, so, so if you, my clutch is like 12, and don't use this as a guide for your clutch because this is a screw gun, not a drill gun. So this has a very light one. All right, so that one didn't work out. I was hoping that would work out. So we're gonna put this in park again so I can get out of the car and I can actually see what I'm drilling into. I got lucky on the first one. All right, so now. All right, all I had to do was push it back of here. And as soon as I pushed it back in here, it lined up with the hole. All right, so we're gonna slow it down. Clutch did its thing. All right. So if you notice over here, the USB kind of came down. You want to push that back out of the way. All right. So let's put these connectors back in here. It's 
why it's important to get the uh, shifter out of the way. Locking tab opposite the face. All right. These always just get me a little confused, but lately I've gotten uh, used to where they belong. So sometimes this may be a tricky thing to do. Yeah, it went in fine. Yep, yeah, went in fine. All right, so this is... I just want to always make sure that I can push in. So we got that travel room. These two are here. Actually, if you look at this one, this one needs a little more, a little more in. I'll do it by hand. There you go. All right, let me see if I can get this little screw to drop right here with the magnet, or do I need to pause the video? Nope, I see it. Where's my magnet? Invest in a little magnet in this car, because honestly, <laughs> Without that magnet, I'd be in trouble today. All right, so this is what I mean by little magnet. It has a magnet on the end. What you do is you stick it down in the magnetically. Magnetically. Why am I trying to speak big words? The magnet grabs a screw. All right, that's the original one I dropped below. All right, you see it all looks like it's starting to come together. All right, so this one goes over here, okay? And on this side, we have this one. It's a big connector. All right, now make sure before you put this down that you grab these and get them out so you can reconnect them, okay? Now, this, you still have to slide it under. All right, so there's a little lip that you have to slide under there. And this goes here. Oops, I'm gonna turn off this flashlight. It's probably messing with the lighting. All right, two more screws in here. Be very careful with these, because you don't wanna. What I mean is you don't want to drop it like as you're finishing up. That sucks. All right. <coughs> so now we have the this little thing. All right. So this little thing I pushed back in here. I remember when you took it when I took it out. Remember it wasn't fully seated. So do that one first because that one's a little trickier. See, that's a little trickier. Line up the hole over here. Yowzers. There it goes. Now once you line up the hole, it's easy to plug in the white and the red over here. And violet, I guess what you want to call it. All right, so here's a little advice. I guess not. I thought you had to put it in neutral first, but you're good. All right, so that's good there. All right, and then the shift knob goes in. Do we have to put it in the shift knob yet? Nope. Let me show you the custom USB. All right, so the custom USB, um, there's a little dot that I'm missing right now. Um, so I don't know where that went. So I'll come back and I'll film this and I'll re-edit it if I find it. So what happens here is that this is made specifically for your BMW. Let me zoom in. All right, guys, so this is made specifically for your BMW, uh, what this does, I mean, specifically for this dash kit. That's just a little tape. There's tape everywhere, so your residue just comes right off. All right, so what you do is this, is that you're supposed to be a little white dot in here, but what you do is you put it in here. Check the website for uh, the piece you're going to put in between. All right, so that goes right there. All right, and then what you do is you push this in. It's pressure fit. All right, so... As you push it in, it squeezes it shut, and that's your USB. All right. Um, but like I said, check the website for the final piece. I don't know what we're doing, 
Um, I had one customer say that uh, this pushed right out, so we're, we're trying to figure out exactly how to finish it off. But uh, that's it. That's the uh, installation of a Sony XAV AX5000 in a uh, BMW uh, 3 Series. Oh, wait. i got to show you how to program the steering controls. Hey, what's up, guys? So just wanted to clarify about the USB. So this USB uh, still needs some work. Uh, by the time you see this video, it'll probably be done. All right? All right, guys, so outside of the box, coming straight out, programmed, um, volume up, volume down, track up, which if you hold it is seek, all work, all right? Um, phone buttons, I don't think they do anything out of the box, but it doesn't matter because we're going to reprogram them anyway. So we're going to go home, we're going to go into settings, uh, obviously the steering controls are upside down because we rotated the wheel to make this easier to show. You go to general, first thing you do is turn off the demo because it's annoying, you're going to go over here, you're going to steering controls, go to custom, and you hit the little, oh, Custom, you hit the little gear. So, volume up is volume up, volume down oops, is volume down. We're going to do track up. All right, track down. All right. Now, uh, this button is a double press button. Uh, check the website for the latest details. We're trying to do more with this, but right now, uh, the way we program it is when you do, come on. All right, so you tap it to pick up, and then to hang up, you hold it. Now you can do it different, and then voice. Is uh, RT, okay? Um, so. We're trying to do this, uh, tap it to pick up, double tap it to hang up, and then hold it for voice. But, um, you know, it costs money to do that, so we're, we're... Anyway, check the website for the latest details, uh, latest configuration. But uh, this is our current configuration, so it's nice. And uh, that's it. So you just do that, and you go over here, and you just hit home, and it works, uh, oops. It works the way it's supposed to, you know. Track up, volume, volume down. All right, so anyway, uh, that's how you install the XAV AX5000 or BMW 3 Series. My name is Christian. This is NFIG Car Stereo. We sell, we install, we ship worldwide via shop. We also do wholesale accounts. Um, if you got it to the end of this video, do me a favor, give me a like. Um, if you really like the stuff, you can also subscribe. Or if you really like the stuff, you can get notifications every time we put up a video. We're not super annoying, I promise. And um, that's it. If you're a shop, we do wholesale accounts. And leave a comment down below because if I can answer it for you, I can answer it for everybody else at the same time as well. Uh, my name is Christian. This is NFIG Car Stereo. Thank you so much for watching.